week on the Campus Countdown, One New Hampshire University is offering a new major in anti-racist studies. The course catalog boasts that this major will break down white supremacist ideology and allow students to repair their own thinking and the structure of their communities. Also this week, we have a university who has now declared racism a public health crisis and guest correspondent Wyatt Eagles to discuss a conservative student group fighting for their right to free speech. We have a great episode for you this week. I'm Addison Pummel, and this is the Campus Countdown. For our third story of the week, the University of Connecticut has declared racism a, quote, public health crisis, end quote, after pressure from student activists. The university's interim president released a statement on September 22nd that praised UConn's undergraduate student government for asking that the school, quote, follow the state of Connecticut in declaring racism a public health crisis, end quote. The president's statement referenced Connecticut's House House of Representatives passing legislation on June 1st that named racism as a public health crisis in a 114 to 33 vote. With this declaration, the university has diluted the urgency and significance of the phrase public health crisis. The idea that systematic racism is a health crisis has quickly spread from one university to the next. The University of Connecticut is a public university, so it is troubling that the president and the student government took such a radical stance on this issue. The idea that racism itself is a public health crisis is not a moderate or even mainstream idea. Universities, and especially public ones, should be a true marketplace of ideas where students receive both points of view on a given topic or idea. When our university's leaders take such radical stances on controversial issues, it promotes a culture of intimidation and indoctrination on campus. Unfortunately, today, students feel more entitled to make such demands, and the leftist university leaders now feel empowered to pick and choose which facts they want to believe in. For our second story of the week, we have Campus Reform correspondent Wyatt Eagles here to tell you more. Thanks, Edison. Schools across the country have adopted policies requiring students to wear masks on campus. At Montana State University, the Young Americans for Liberty chapter is speaking out against their policy, and the school is not happy. A petition circulated by MSU's YAL president alleges that the school's decision to require masks on campus came as a shock to students after they were already registered for classes for the semester. The petition garnered over 1,000 signatures and called on MSU President Waited Cruzado to rescind the policy and return the rights of students to make personal health decisions, as well as bring a sense of normalcy to their students' education. But according to one member of the YAL chapter, the school denied his request to make an appointment with the university president to personally deliver his petition. In response, the YAL students scheduled a protest in front of the administration building to express their demands. And in a video obtained exclusively by campus reform, university police barred the group from entering. Now, there are debates here about the university's justification for the school's mask policy and how the president's office handled the situation. But the most important issue here is the way the faculty and staff members responded to the student's position. Members of the school ridiculed and insulted him for his opinions. One individual called him a selfish idiot in an email. Now this goes to show an indictment of the free speech environment on MSU's campus. Members of the faculty and administration are entitled, they seem to feel, to demean and insult students rather than engage with them in a professional and civil manner. One would hope that professors would be role models for their students, especially when they are responding to students on matters of vital importance like vaccine and mask mandates. Thanks, Wyatt. For our top story of the week, Keene State College, a public liberal arts college in New Hampshire, is now offering a Bachelor of Arts in anti-racist studies. The college has said that the major will equip students with the necessary skills to apply anti-racism. The course catalog explains that the major will, quote, investigate the experiences, expressions, and possibilities voiced and embodied principally by people of color that emerge from an ongoing struggle with white supremacist ideology, end quote. Students in the major will also be required to engage in anti-racist practices, quote, to identify and repair harm done by racism in their own thinking and in the structures and actions of their communities, end quote. The major will require 120 credit hours and include classes such as Latina feminist theories and restorative ecology. Progressive majors at liberal arts colleges are not new. 
This does bring up the question, what do students do with these majors when they graduate? And as much as I would like to joke that these people just go on to work in coffee shops or local bookstores, the real reality is far more terrifying. There is a common misconception that even though students are liberal while they're in college, when they graduate and they get their first mortgage, hopefully they flip to the other side. Although this might have been true in the past, it is completely false today. A 2016 study by the Pew Research Center concluded that more and more college graduates are identifying as liberal. The study found that actually only 10% of Americans with some graduate education identify with, quote, consistently conservative positions, end quote. The study also concluded that this ideological gap is growing by the day. Instead of graduates changing their ideas and their values to conform to society, the post-college world will have to change itself in order to accommodate these indoctrinated students. The ideas that students learn in their anti-racism majors are not confined to the college classroom. They spread into the workforce and the government and eventually are passed down, creating an alarming cycle of radical liberal perspectives. Our woke tweet of the week comes from Columbia professor Anthony Zinkis, who is infamous for his radical Twitter rants. The tweet reads, quote, instead of fighting to lower prescription drug prices, let's just nationalize the entire pharmaceutical industry in the name of public health and make all medicine free, end quote. This week, Zinkis also tweeted, quote, pharmaceutical companies shouldn't exist, end quote. And one day later, he said, quote, private health insurance companies should not exist, end quote. Now, I should point out that this professor's Twitter feed is so saturated with radical left-wing ideology that I honestly thought that it was satire at first. There are so many things wrong with his plan to completely do away with privatized medicine and healthcare. Besides the fact that this would come with a huge price tag, privatized industry promotes competition and by consequence improves the quality of our products. If we turn the healthcare industry over to the government, a trip to the ER might become eerily similar to a trip to the DMV. All right, those are all the stories we have for you this week. If you are watching on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to follow along with all of the liberal abuse in higher education on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter by following us at Campus Reform. We will be back next week with another episode of the Campus Countdown. I'm Addison Pummel. Thanks for watching.